Hi. Do you know what that is? If you said it's a fraction, then we're off to a good start. I actually have a better answer for that, though. I mean, it's true, that is a fraction, but I have a different answer for that, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But before we dive right into math, I want to talk a little bit about your journal. In the introductory video for this class, I said that you should really have one of these. <clears throat> it could be a composition book, it could be a spiral notebook, it doesn't really matter. But it is kind of important that you stay up to date with this, that you really treat it like a journal. I don't know how many of you actually keep a diary every day, but I want you to keep a diary every day for mathematics. And the reason is because first, well, there's a couple of reasons. And the first one is staying organized like this keeps everything in a one place that you can go back to if you ever forget, or if you just need to go back over something, if you need a little extra help. Also, and I know everybody likes it when they say the research shows, but it's true that when you actually write down the things that you see and that you hear, it makes it stick a little bit better. Now again, I'm not gonna be asking you to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. I don't believe in rote memorization, especially in math. But I am gonna show you some processes and some ideas and some ways of thinking about things that really will help. So make sure you're keeping track of what's going on in this course here, okay? Um, I just kind of started it off real quick. The first thing I would do is in these first couple of pages, I would go ahead and say, this page and this page, the first two pages, are only for table of contents, okay? I don't know if you're necessarily going to, depending on what, what kind of rule you get, this is a wide ruled uh, notebook. I don't know if you're gonna use both pages, but it's good to leave yourself some room, all right? So already, I set this up so that I know this is the table of contents. I'm gonna have three columns being used. One is where I'm gonna put the date of when I do this lesson. One is going to be the title of the lesson, and one is going to be the page number inside of my journal. I already filled this one out for today. Um, today's lesson is ratio relationships, and it's going to be on page one. Okay. This is another table of contents page, so I'm going to skip that one. You'll notice that I lettered them A and B. And then my very first page. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not really a front and back kind of writer. You may be. I find that it gets kind of messy and sloppy. So basically, um, when I number these things, I'll, I'll number as I go. But I will probably never write on the back. So this is page one, and this is ratio relationships. This is where I would take notes on today's lesson. And when I fill up this page here, I will turn the page and number this one two, okay? And then three, and so on. It's very tempting for some people to go ahead and just number the, every page in the whole notebook. I wouldn't do that yet if I were you, because what if you mess up on something or, or whatever, and you end up messing up your table of contents and how it matches up with these pages. So I would hold off on that for a little while. So if you haven't already, and if you need a little time, you can go ahead and pause this video. Uh, go ahead and set up your table of contents with those three columns, date, lesson title, and page. And then go ahead and get this first page ready for today's lesson, which is ratio relationships. And when you're done with that, go ahead and unpause the video and we'll continue talking about this guy. So I asked you what this was and chances are you said it was a fraction and you're not wrong. In fact, that's very astute of you. <laughs> it means you've had some background with fractions. This fraction says three over six or three sixths. Let's talk about fractions for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick review on this, just so we know we're all on the same page. We know that a fraction is made up of two different numbers like this, all right? This is numerator, right? What's this one? Did you say denominator? Good. And we need to make sure that we know what these things stand for as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a model. I'm gonna draw the standard model that everybody likes to make for fractions, and that's the pi. So I'll make a nice little circle right here, okay? <clears throat> that's my pie. My second favorite dessert. Cheesecake is my favorite. And let's talk about how we're going to make this model fit that fraction. First of all, do you remember what the denominator means? The denominator means this is how many pieces represent the whole thing. So here's my whole pie. I want it to have six pieces. 
So I'll draw that now. I'll cut it in half and then I'll kind of cut a slice here, maybe a slice there. And the whole idea is to try to get each one of those pieces to be equal in size as much as possible. Mine probably aren't, but we're gonna pretend that they are. So do you remember what that top If that means the number of total pieces, this number, the numerator, means how many pieces out of that total are being represented, all right? And I can, re I can represent pieces in many different ways. I could say, well, I want these three pieces to be pieces that I've already eaten, okay? So these pieces right here are gone. So I've already eaten them. I have eaten three-sixths of this pie. They're gone. That's one way to represent it. I can also say there are three pieces of this pie remaining, okay? If I've eaten these three, then I can also use this fraction to represent what's left. I have left you, I have saved you, friend, three pieces of this pie. So you get this piece and this piece and this piece. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so that's a fraction. That should be something we're relatively familiar with. And if you remember when we were looking at fractions like this, hopefully it was sort of put into your brain that we can't just leave most fractions like this. Remember simplifying? We can simplify this fraction. Basically by taking its greatest common factor if you do remember that one. If not, we actually have a lesson later on on greatest common factor. But it's basically when you take the greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator and divide both by that greatest common factor. And when I do that, three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. The reason I picked three over six is because it's pretty easy to see that this fraction also can be represented by just saying one half. I ate three out of the six pieces, I ate half the pie. I saved you three out of those six pieces, I left you the other half, okay? So this is a simplified fraction. We can also call these two fractions equivalent fractions. That means they have the same value, they just look different, okay? And that's easy to see with this model. Now I told you I had a different answer. Yes, it's a fraction. But I also have something else. The reason I wrote three over six on the board wasn't to talk about fractions. It was to talk about ratios. This is a ratio. Now, when you look in a textbook, a math textbook, it'll tell you the definition is, let's see, a comparison of two values or quantities. <clears throat> well, that's kind of what a fraction was, right? A fraction was a comparison of the whole to its part, to whatever part you're trying to represent. I'm not saying that a comparison between values is the wrong definition. I'm gonna tell you it's not good enough, okay? Because I wanna throw in the word relationship here. A ratio is a relationship between two quantities, all right? Let me illustrate a little bit. I have some coins here. I don't know if you can see these too well, but I have some pennies and some nickels. And if you can see this, I have six nickels and three pennies. See the connection here yet? I have in my hand nine coins. Three of them are pennies, six of them are nickels. So to make this very simple, a ratio is the relationship between two quantities. Okay? Now, the values may change. Maybe I can go get some more coins. But I really like this ratio, okay? I really want it to stay the same. So let's say I wanted to give away some of my coins to you, but I really wanted to keep this ratio. All right? Remember how with the pie, we simplified that fraction and it became one over two? I can do the same thing with a ratio. I can say, you know what? I really wanna give you some of my coins here, but I also wanna make sure that I keep this ratio. So if I'm gonna give away some of my coins, how can I give these away so that I get to keep this ratio, but I don't have all these coins, all right? 
here's how I can do it. Well, <clears throat> I can split these up into even groups. For instance, I can put one penny here. Um, I have three pennies, so I'm gonna put three different groups. So each penny is gonna be matched up with two nickels. Okay, look closely at that. Each penny, since I'm trying to break these up into even groups, is gonna be paired up with two nickels. So I wanna keep the ratio just like that. A Couple ways I can do this. I can give you one of these groups, okay? Here's your one penny and your two nickels. And I can be left with two pennies and four nickels. Or I can give you the other group here and I can just be left with one to two. One penny to two nickels. The point I'm making here is that ratio values can change, okay? But the relationship between the two items shouldn't. There should always be this many pennies to this many nickels. Or if I want to simplify it all the way down, I should always have two, penny, or two nickels matched up with every penny. All right? So that's kind of a general idea of how a ratio looks. So far so good? All right. How are they different from fractions? Well, if you look at this, I wasn't comparing a whole thing to its parts. I was actually comparing two different parts, right? This is what we call a part to part ratio. Because I had nine coins. Three of them were pennies, three of them were nickels. So I was actually comparing a part to another part. You can do that with ratios. That's kind of nice. Can I compare a part to a whole? Is that a kind of a ratio? Actually, yeah, it is. I can show you this as a part to whole ratio. And these are the ones that look really, really close to fractions, okay? These are the ones that <clears throat> um, look really close to the pie that we just made, except this isn't three pieces out of a whole six. I'm gonna have to change this number to the number of coins that I had. So I had three pennies in my collection of nine coins, and I'm gonna have to change this label to total coins. This is a, an important distinction, all right? So this one, this ratio, tells the exact same story as the three to six, but instead of comparing my pennies to nickels this time, I'm comparing just my pennies to all of the coins, all right? Here's another one. And let me go back to the part to part real quick because I want to show you a neat little trick with ratios. If I were to flip a fraction upside down like that and find it's reciprocal, would it still mean the same thing? Think about that for a second. If I had a pie, if I had my nice little pie model right and I had three out of six pieces represented for you, and then I decided to flip this thing upside down, would it still say the same story about fractions, about that pie? Let's think about that. Let's do that. Here it is upside down. Here, I've eaten three pieces out of a total six, if this were a fraction, right? If I flip that upside down, this says six pieces out of a total three. Wait a minute, whoa. Basically, this means that we had two whole pies. Do you remember that from fractions? Ratios are different. If I flip this ratio upside down and I give it its, its labels one more time, do these two mean the same thing? Actually, yeah, they do. That's weird, and that's kind of cool. So how do I know which one is correct or which one actually works? If I handed you all my coins and I said, hey, look at my coins, I have three pennies and six nickels, and I said, what's the ratio? Which one would you pick? Here's the answer. Order matters with ratios. If I told you, <clears throat> if I told you, tell me the ratio of nickels to pennies, what would your answer be? 
Hopefully this one. Because I said nickels first. That's how easy it is. That's the only, it's the only hint you really need to know which way to write a ratio. If I had said, tell me a ratio for pennies to nickels, then you would have picked this one because I said pennies first, okay? So I have one more thing to share with you about ratios. And by the way, there is no exercise for this lecture. If you look underneath this video, you'll actually see that there's a lesson supplement. So everything that I've talked about now, you'll see kind of the same thing in the supplement. I've basically taken notes for you, except with some slightly different examples. Okay. So make sure you read through that supplement as well. And if you, anything in here was confusing to you to start, maybe what I wrote for you in, your, in the notes will help you out. So the last thing, this little form right here, I've been writing ratios that look like fractions, right? There's a name for those. And you might want to write that down. It makes sense that these ratios are fractional notation. Most of the time I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be working with ratios in fractional notation just because they're a lot easier to work with. It's much easier to work with a ratio that has a top and a bottom than the next kind I'm going to talk to you about. Okay. The next one, this one right here, pennies to nickels. Remember the first one goes on top. If I told you to write the ratio for pennies to nickels, you also could have written it this way. Three to six. Have you seen that before? It's three with a colon between it and the six. This means exactly the same thing as this. And this right here is actually called, fittingly enough, the dot notation. When I'm doing calculations with ratios, I'm not going to use this as much. However, we are going to use the dot notation once in a while just to make sure that we're okay with moving in between. Okay? So again, three to six, three to six. Nickels to pennies has the six on top and the three on the bottom. And if I were to say nickels to pennies in dot notation, I would simply write the th six first. Okay? I hope that makes sense. When I was taught uh, ratios in middle school, they told me a ratio is a comparison between the two values. Now start writing ratios. <laughs> Don't worry. I do want you to be familiar with what a ratio is. And in the next video lesson, I want you to get used to writing ratios and using ratios to talk about scenarios. So for now, if you need to go back through the video on any of this stuff, Make sure that you've taken some notes and then download my, uh, my lesson notes so that you can kind of compare what you've got and I've got. And maybe the notes will also clarify some of these things here. Okay? That's the end of ratio relationships. Thanks for watching.